This is Mr. Kanyira once more doing the Euclidean geometry in the Visual X Masterclass. We are responding to problems on Euclidean geometry at the back of our mind, theorems, theorems, nothing else but theorems. The statement becomes vitally important. We are told that M is the center of a circle. Now, if M is the center of a circle, it makes line AB the diameter. Do I know any theorem that has to deal with the diameter? Yes. An angle subtended by the diameter is 90 degrees. So it gives me that this angle here is 90 degrees because it is subtended by the diameter. We just got it from the fact that M is the center and the line that passes through the center is the diameter. What is this line called from there to here? It's called a radius. I'm just looking at theorems. Nothing else but theorems. If this is a radius and this is a tangent, whenever a radius meets a tangent, 90 degrees is formed. There is another 90 degrees here. If this is 90 degrees, the other part will be 90 degrees as well. This side. And the, you're right. What else do we know? We also know that this, is, this will also be another 90 degrees. Straight line gives us 180 degrees. What? There are so many things that we know here. Uh, a line from here, okay. ME is perpendicular to AC. M, ME, or similar tells that this is 90 degrees, that's fine. Uh, CDE is a tangent. We are told that this line is a tangent, the radius meets a tangent. There's something that we know here. If this is a tangent and this is a chord, tan chord theorem, I go with this and go to the circumference. I don't go here. Angle between a tangent and, this, and, and, and a chord is equal to the angle subtended by that chord in the circumference. So I know such things. All right. And I'm, I'm told that MB is 2 times BC. MB is 2 times BC. Which one is big? MB is 2 times bigger than BC. Let's indicate it this way. If this is 2, this would be 1. I'm saying this is 2 times bigger than that, that one. What is the name of this line from there to here? It's called a radius. So what will this one be called? Same thing, a radius. From there to here, it's a radius. So we know the things that look the same, that are actually the same. Let's look at questions. Now that we've looked at the statement and we've got so much information just from the statement. Now let's work out, let's work it out. If D is equal to X, write down, don't think, don't calculate, just write down two other angles equals to X. Where is X? This is where our X is. This is where our X is. Look at the position of that X. Where is X? X is between a tangent and a chord. It is between a tangent and a chord. To find angle equals to X, I've got to go with the chord and move with it to the circumference to find another angle equals to X. So this angle here will be equals to X. So angle A is also equal to X. We're responding to this question. Angle A is equal to X. Why? Tan chord theorem. Let's find the second one. Now watch here. AM is equal to MD. Why are these two equal? Radi. Radius, radius. This plural for radius is radi. Radi. This is plural for radius. So if these two lines are equal in this triangle, isosceles triangle, therefore this angle will be equal to this one. We found a second angle equals to x. Reason, angles opposite equal, equal sides are equal. Angles opposite equal sides are equal. So x will be equal to x. So the question says write down two other angles equal to x. It was this one. How do we find this one? Tan chord theorem. Then this one is equal to that one because these two uh, sides are equal in that isosceles triangle. So we've done 9.1. Let's go to 9.2. Prove that CM is a tangent at M to the circle passing through MED. Prove that M is a tangent. Prove that CM, where is CM? CM. Uh, this line can go up to, up to there. Prove that CM is a tangent at M. It's a tangent at this point to the circle passing through M, E, and D. 
let, let's, 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 let's catch this diagram. It passes through M, E, and D. The question is, I've got to prove that this is a tangent. Now watch here, if I have something like this, I've got a line here. I don't know what this line is. I've got another line there, which is a chord. I've got this one, I've got that one. Now watch here. If this angle here is equal to that, one, that angle there, definitely this line will be a tangent because it is the angle that is between a chord and a tangent that will be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So if this one is equal to that, definitely this line will be a tangent. The question is, prove that CM is a tangent. We want to prove that CM is a tangent. In other words, we want to show that this line, this whole line here, let me write, do it in red. We want to show that this line is a tangent. All right? Okay. Now, let's, let's look at it. <laughs> if, if, if this was a tangent, uh, uh, let me look at it. It's better that way. Okay. Remember we found these 90s here, subtended by, 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 by the diameter. Look at, look at this one, look at this one. Look at this angle here. Look at this angle. In this circle, this becomes my chord. This becomes my chord of this circle. And you can see the angle M3. It is between this line, which I don't know what it is, that I'm trying to prove that it is a tangent. But this angle here, look at this chord. This chord takes me to this angle. And this angle is exactly equal to 90 degrees. Look at this one. If this is a, a radius, it meets a tangent, 90 degrees is formed, right? Now, if then this is a, a chord, the angle between this line and this chord, it subtends this angle here, which is 90 degrees. It makes this angle to be the same as that angle. In the very same way, if this angle is equal to that angle, therefore this line will be a tangent. Now, if we say M3 is between a line, which we don't know what it is, and this chord, and this chord forms 90 degrees here at the circumference, Therefore, this angle, if this angle is got to this one, definitely this line must be a tangent. That's how you go about responding to 9.3, to 9.2. Let's go to 9.3. Prove that FMBD is a cyclic quad, it's concyclic. Remember, there are only two theorems that deal with cyclic quad. It's this one, which says the two, this, which says this angle plus this angle must be equal to 180 degrees. And the second one, which says the exterior angle, this one, exterior, is equal to this one, equal. But we add those two, you get 190. This one is equal to that. So that's what we'll be looking for in that, in that particular question. Let's look at it. Prove that FMBD is a cyclic quad. For something to be cyclic quad, this angle and this angle must give me 180. Or the exterior angle must be equal to the interior opposite angles. Now let's let's look where is FMBD. FMBD, let, let me do it in, in, in black. F F this one. F M B. Where is D? D. I must show that this figure here in black is concyclic. I'm saying to you, if we have something like this, if this angle plus this angle gives us 180 degrees, it means that this is concyclic. We can draw a cycle around this. Or if I have something like this, if this angle here is equal to that one, therefore there is a circle around here. I don't have to be told. It's the it, it, it inverse, converse of the uh, cyclic quad. Uh, let, let's work it out. Let's work it out. Uh, <laughs> look at this angle here. How many degrees is this angle? This angle here. M1 and M2. This is 90 degrees because this is perpendicular to that one. We're given that 90 degrees. Now watch here, remember in the beginning, we had a diameter 
it subtends this angle here which will also give it 90 degrees now we are, we are then asked is this FMBD concyclic? It will only be concyclic if this angle plus this angle is one that is equal to uh, 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 180 degrees or if this one is equal to that one. There are two ways. If I like, I can say to them, uh, look at angle M1 and M2. Angle M1 plus angle M2 is equal to 90 degrees, right? Number two, angle D2 plus D3 is also equals to 90 degrees. Where did you get that one from? Subtended by the diameter AB. Remember that it was subtended by the diameter AB. Now let's, let's add these two and see what we get. If you add M1 plus 2 plus D1 plus D, D1 plus D3, D, not D1, D2 plus D3, D2 plus 3, what do we get? M1 plus M2, it is 90 degrees. Plus D2 plus D3, D2 plus D3, it is also equal to 90 degrees. What is 90 plus 90? It is 180 degrees. What is this saying to me? The sum of these two angles, if they are 180, this will be concyclic. Therefore, therefore, UFMBD is concyclic converse of the sum of two opposite interior angles of a cyclic quad. So that's what, how you go about doing it. I want us to look at this, this last one. Prove that dc squared is equal to 5bc squared. Prove that dc squared is equal to 5bc squared. Prove that it's about three marks. Prove that dc squared is equal to 5bc squared. I don't know where to start. But I go back to my grade 8, grade 9. When I see something that is squared, I think of a Pythagoras theorem. Remember that the Pythagoras theorem happens in a right angle triangle. This side is squared is equal to this side squared plus this side squared. That's what Pythagoras is saying. The square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. If this is x, this is y, this is r, Pythagoras is saying r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. This is what the theorem of Pythagoras is saying from our grade 8 and grade 9. Now, Prove that dc squared is equal to 5bc squared. Why am I thinking along these lines? Because I see something that is squared. It's pushing me towards thinking towards the, the Pythagoras theorem. dc squared is equal to 5bc squared. Let's go to the diagram and look at that. dc. I know that for me to use Pythagoras, I must have a right angle triangle. Now, I see dc there. Here is my dc. Here is my dc. This is my DC. Can I create a right angle triangle from here? Yes, I can. Remember, we have this 90 here. From here to here. So if I want to create 90, I must have DC and BC. There is BC there. So I will have to move up from here to get a right angle triangle. To get a right angle triangle. I need to go up here and then close there. This is the triangle that I'll be using. This triangle, let me just shade it in this way. This is the triangle that I'm dealing with. I'm going to prove that in triangle, triangle what? MDC. This is the triangle that I want to focus at. Triangle MDC. DC squared. I want to do that, to find what is, is it really 5 BC squared? I can see BC in the same triangle. All right, uh, what is this saying? Let's, let's write the theorem of Pythagoras. This is MC squared is equals to MD squared plus DC squared. That's what Pythagoras is saying. If this is 90 degrees, the side opposite will be the hypotenuse. The square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. But this one started with DC. We know that DC squared, let, let me write it down so that it will make sense. Uh, we, we, we know that MC squared, MC squared is equal to DC squared, right? MC squared is equal to DC squared plus DM squared or MD squared, reason Pythagoras theorem. 
All right, that's what we have. Can I ask you something? Are we looking for MC? No, we're looking for DC. Let's make DC the subject. Now, DC squared will then be equals to this is this must come to the side will be equals to MC squared minus DM squared because this is coming this side minus DM squared. Okay, let's look at what we have now and what we want to get. This is where we are running to. This is squared, I've got it here. Five pieces squared. Oops, I've got MC and D and DM. Can I write this in terms of BC? Because that's what we have there. We've got BC. Let's look at MC. Can I change MC to be in terms of BC? Because I see BC, there is no MC there, there is no DM there. Let's change that around. Where is MC? This is MC. Can I express MC in terms of BC? Okay, now watch here. Look at this given here. What is this saying? MB is equal to 2BC. MB is equal to 2BC. So if this is BC, MB will be how many BCs? It will be 2BC and 1BC. Right? We are given. MB is equal to 2BC. Where there is MB, you can put 2BC there. That's the distance there. So, but we want to change MC into BC. <laughs> MC. How many BCs do we have here? We've got 2 and 1. So this all together will be 3BC. 3BC. So MB is 2BC. BC is 1BC. So MC will be 2BC plus 1BC, which will give us 3BC. So this is what? is equals to 3BC squared. So we've expressed uh, MC in terms of BC. Now let's work on the other one, which is DM minus DM. Let's look at DM. Where is DM? This one. Can we express this in terms of BC? Remember, we want to have BC. What is the name of this line? It's called the radius. What is the name of this line? It's called the radius. What is the name of that line? It's called the radius. If we, radius is the same in or in the same tri in the same cycle, so this distance is the same as this one, the same as this one, and we want to express this in terms of that distance, and they are the same. Remember that MB is the same as MD. Why is these two the same? The radii of the same cycle. Therefore, I can remove MD and put BC, right? How many BCs are these? Two BCs. So it's minus two BC squared through substitution. Right, that's what we have. We only have BCs now. Uh, now, watch here. If, if I look at this, if you read this, it's five BC squared. Is five squared? No. What is squared there? It is only BC. I want us to have only BC to be squared and take three out of, of out, out of it for being squared. So this is squared. Will then be equals. Let's take this out of being squared. It will be nine. Leave only BC to be squared. It will be nine BC squared. Right. That's what I wanted. I've got to do the same thing that side as well. So this will be minus because I want to have BC squared, not five to be squared. So this two must not be squared. What is two squared? It is four. What? B, C squared. Now only B, C squared. What does two boys mean? It means Abafana Babil. 2X squared or X squared about 2. 2 sin X or sin X about 2. 9 B, C squared or B, C squared about 9. Minus 4 B, C squared. How many B, C squared do we have this side? We've got 9. How many are we subtracting? We are subtracting 4. How many are we going to be left with? So this C squared will be equal to what is 9 minus 4? It is 5 of the same thing of B, C squared. It is exactly what we wanted to get. So it is true that this C squared is equal to 5 B, C squared. Thank you.